Yo, what's up everybody? In this video, we're going to discuss a concept called the DuPont identity. And to start the video off, let's do a little review. So return on equity, we know, is equal to the net income over the equity. Now this ratio is one of the more popular ones from financial statements, net income being from the income statement and the equity being from the balance sheet. And shareholders especially like this ratio because it tells them what kind of return they're getting because they're represented by this equity section in the balance sheet. The problem with this ratio is that there are positive and negative ways to increase it. So the positive or the more organic ways, I like to say, is increasing stuff like profit margin or increasing the efficiency of the assets. All of those things will bring up the return on equity in a organic, nice way. But unfortunately, there's also artificial ways to bring up the return on equity. So the most common example would be taking on more debt. So more debt, you can increase the return on equity, but the problem with taking on more debt is that you increase your chance of bankruptcy because you have to pay a higher interest to the bondholders. And if you don't meet that higher interest, then things are going to hit the fan. So the real question is, is how can we know whether our return on equity, which is a very general ratio, as you can see, net income over equity, how can we know whether it's coming from organic sources or artificial sources? And the answer is, is we have to break down this ratio into more components. So to start off, let's multiply the ratio by this bracket here, assets over assets. And assets over assets, this bracket just represents one. So it's like this ratio is staying the same because we're just multiplying it by one, but we're adding this new element of the assets figure from the balance sheet. And since we're multiplying two fractions, we can mix up the numerators and the denominators. So I put this net income here over assets times the assets over equity. And if you notice, if you were to multiply these two fractions, these assets would cancel out and you'd end up having net income over equity, which was our original ratio for return on equity. But what's nice about this is that we've broken down the return on equity into two separate components. So the first component is this net income over assets, and that's also known as the return on assets ratio. And the second component is this assets over equity, and that's also known as the equity multiplier. And as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, you want to know whether this return on equity is coming from organic sources or artificial sources. And this assets over equity, it's more of an artificial source because this tells us how much debt we're taking on. If we take on more debt, then the equity multiplier would go up because the equity would stay the same, denominator would stay the same, but the assets, the left side of the balance sheet would go up as well. Now in contrast, the return on assets, this is a more organic source for the return on equity because we can't just increase the debt and have this ratio necessarily go up because if we do increase the debt, the net income might go up, but the assets, the denominator is going to go up for sure. So that increase of debt is not going to be necessarily reflected as much in this ratio as it would be in this one. So what you want to do is you want to try to maximize your return on equity from this component and not this one. Now this return on assets we can break down even further. So what I did was I added this sales over sales, which is like we did up here, we added assets over assets. The sales is the figure from the income statement. And this is just like multiplying these ratios by one. So there's no changes, but we are adding this extra element of sales or revenue. So then mixing up these two fractions, the numerators and the denominators, we would end up with net income over sales times the sales over the assets times the assets over the equity. That last ratio stays the same. And notice when we multiply these three fractions, the sales and the sales can cancel out and then the assets and the assets would cancel out and we would just be left with net income over equity, which was our original ratio for return on equity. So basically we just took the return on equity and we broke it down into three separate components. So taking this return on equity and breaking it down into these three components, that's what the DuPont identity is. This whole line here is basically called the DuPont identity. Now the first component, net income over sales, both of these figures we can get from the income statement. That 
component is called the profit margin ratio and the profit margin ratio just measures the operating efficiency of a company and it's an organic source for the return on equity because you can't just necessarily increase sales and have your profit margin go up you have to have that operating efficiency because if you increase sales but your costs increase as well then your net income isn't going to increase and this ratio won't increase or it may even go down next component is the sales over assets so the sales we get from the income statement the assets we get from the balance sheet and this ratio here is called the total asset turnover and that's another organic source for the return on equity because if we can increase that basically this ratio it measures the asset use efficiency so are we using our assets efficiently if we're increasing sales and our assets are staying the same that means that we're using our assets more efficiently this ratio is going to go up and therefore our return on equity is going to go up but if we're increasing our sales and our assets are increasing at the same time then we're not necessarily being as efficient as we can with our assets and the third component we've already gone over it assets over equity it's just basically the equity multiplier the assets we would get from the balance sheet the equity we would get from the balance sheet as well and this ratio here just measures the financial leverage or how much debt you're taking on so out of the three components this last component is the more artificial one and it's the one that you got to be really careful with because if you look at companies in the past a lot of them have increased their return on equity However, they haven't done it in an organic way by either increasing the profit margin or the total asset turnover. In fact, there's been cases where the return on equity has gone up and these two components have gone down. But because the company increases their debt, they take on so much debt, this equity multiplier increase overpowers the decrease in these two assets and then the return on equity ends up going up. So if you just look at the return on equity ratio, you would think that it's a good thing it's been going up <clears throat> but when you actually break it down into the dupont identity you would see that it's coming from the more artificial source of increase and in leverage so return on equity just use this identity to know are you getting the return on equity from organic sources so from these two components or is it a more artificial source are you increasing the debt and that would be shown in the third component Yo, what's up guys? Thanks for checking out my channel. Hopefully you got some value from the video you just watched. If you did get some value, big favor to ask you, please like this video and subscribe to the channel. Any questions, any recommendations on things you'd like to see, please leave it in the comments section. Also check out the description box below for links to material and content related to the video you just watched. Peace out.